How is school going? Good. Are you going on each Zoom and it's been fine? Yeah, You're not going to tell them you have to take a number two again, right? No. Okay, okay. Bye. Love you. The weirdest place I've taken a video call is in a bathroom, and my children are banging on the door. And they're like, I have to use the bathroom, Papa. I open the door. Definitely had a one-year-old like you know in the screen, like with very big clients and meetings. Hi, my name is Eve Brodsky, author of the best-selling book Fair Play. Now that work, school, and family life are all taking place in our homes, it's time that we treat our home as our most important organization. With three kids, you're outnumbered. Just adjusting with level of activity in the home. Our kids are keeping us busy. I mean, it gets stressful when she leaves. I try to keep out of her way. I try to keep the kids out of her way so that she can do what she needs to do. Especially in this time, it's about communicating a lot, planning our days, making sure that we're available for each other. One thing that I think has been a challenge with us is just falling into the habit of the children automatically being with me and kind of being my responsibility during the days. So how do you ask for boundaries when you're all in the same place? Boundaries is a really important part of life and parenting. And when something like this happens, it's easy to watch boundaries disappear. The pressure of like being with the one-year-old, I'm getting work emails, she needs me to move her from one video conference to the school's platform. A communication readjust is precisely what we need during these times. And here's how you can do it. One, don't give feedback in the moment. Two, carve out time for just a 10-minute couples check-in. Number three, start with your why. Instead of asking for what you need to get done, start with why it matters to you. Sometimes it's hard because I think the two of us, we, we both want to be present. I think both of us take on uh, all of the tasks. And there's never really a clear winner, I might add. Yeah, yeah. true. <laughs> Agreed. So you can avoid what I call the double up. It's when both parents and partners are always on. Set a schedule for when you're on and when you're off, and you both communicate that to your children. You could be holding the homeschool card from 9 to 12 and hand it over to your partner from 12 to 3. I think that's another big thing as a mother to learn that like he's not going to do it my way, but he's going to figure it out. The hardest thing to say no to is when the kids want my attention. To say no to something, I feel a little guilty. I totally understand the feeling of guilt, especially in these crazy times where it feels like we have no time. But what we can control is how we set our boundaries, our routines, how we communicate about these difficult times. The most beautiful part of my children going back to school is them being back in a learning environment for the majority of the day. We've had some really great moments during quarantine. A lot of it has to do with like having both parents there. It's really kind of incredible, the intense time you get to spend together. If I were to offer advice to parents going back to school, make sure that you're practicing self-care. Patience, because this is all brand new and we're teaching a seven-year-old how to type. Don't forget that school time is school time. When you're out of school, when it's over, go right back to family time. I feel like I've gotten really good at saying no to things. <laughs> I say no a lot. I'm the queen of no. We should all become the queen of no. Something that I've said no to is saying no to things that don't serve me. Saying no is super powerful because I think as women sometimes, it's very easy to feel the weight of having to be there for everyone or having to be everything for everyone. No matter how you're going back to school, Pureleaf and I want to remind you that it's okay to say no to the things that don't serve you in order to make room for the things that do. Because no is beautiful.